Oh, <laughs> sorry. So, George, what do you think are the nice things from the Brazilian scenario that can be shared with other parts of the globe? And furthermore, what are the nice countries around that you know doing nice things outside the African continent that we talk so much about it, especially late in America that you are so connected nowadays? Um, yeah, I think Brazil uh, was at the forefront at some point in the years 2000 um, because we had like, um, I think there's an alignment of timing and the right people at the right place and also economic stability. So the year 2000 were, were a moment of, you know, um, big civic participation and a lot of collaboration between civil society and the government for digital policies. So the year 2000 were, were a decade of, um, you know, Brazilian government really leading the way towards free software policies, you know, um, also technology development um, that are not necessarily, you know, owned, but like half half a company, half a dozen people. Um, and I think that our, our internet, the civic, civic um, internet law that was approved um, was in this context of really a lot of, you know, innovation uh, to in this alliance between civil society and uh, organizations and, and the government. So there was a big social participation. We were at the moment really, you know, um, in this discourse of digital democracy. So people were sending in their, their participations through the portal, et cetera. Uh, so we had this big momento, I think, which was historical of, you know, a law that was like, um, that was at the same time pre um, promoting uh, technology development, but was also promoting um, digital participation, uh, consumer ownership, which is really important also, and, you know, data privacy, et cetera, et cetera. We kind of lost this momentum as, because that, that's how the history plays its role. And I think we had a lot of uh, uh, losses in this, in this recent years. Um, right now, what I see uh, with this new government now is that there's, you know, people are reorganizing themselves. We have like now a um, uh, 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 council of uh, people that are discussing specifically um, social entrepreneurship, social impact, and sometimes that relates to, for example, makerspaces and etc. cetera. Um, but I, for me, I think for the policies that I believe, I think Europe is leading the way in, on a discussion of, you know, uh, not only digital rights, but really digital infrastructure. Because that's, I think that's really important. If we're speaking about makerspaces and, you know, the, uh, technology development, um, we have also to be discussing about digital infrastructure. So we have some colleagues from uh, Netherlands, uh, the Commons Network. They have been doing some nice work with the European Union on, you know, how do we think as, as you know, internet as a commons, and how do we, as countries, as nations, really invest in infrastructures uh, that can, you know, uh, uh, lead to a future where we are not um, so dependent on three or four white male. USA guys, right? Because right now we depend on Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg for, for our elections, you know? I know, I mean, it seems that I'm exaggerating, but I'm not exaggerating because if we think about, you know, this information uh, in times of climate denial and extreme right wing uprise, you know, it's really serious how we depend on them and how, how much power they have you know, um, for, for uh, 
and, and how this impacts our, our whole life, right? So for me, to, see, to speak about innovation, it's, we have to be really in alliance with, with everybody who is discussing digital infrastructure, ownership, you know, um, and, um, and, uh, and, and, and investment in technology that it's not proprietary, you know? Um, and I think Europe has been having nice discussions on that. There's a there's a, even a cooperation with um, with some organizations here in Brazil, um, Instituto Sociedade Democrática, you know, Ricardo from Poppy. They are doing this project of like digital commons and really rethinking, you know, how do you um, cooperate for, you know, uh, building a, a, another digital infrastructure that is not so concentrated, right? So for me, this is really important. And I think that um, what we really need is that we have to be out of our silos and we need to be building coalitions, you know? So in Brazil, uh, we have this big coalition of digital rights, um, Direitos na Rede. So it's a civil society alliance that's more than like 40 organizations of digital rights organizations. So they managed to build this big coalition, which I think has been really important to negotiate, uh, to advocate um, uh, with, you know, the, the lawmakers, and, but also the executive power, the policy makers. Um, and I think we should be, that's what we should be doing, you know, really creating alliances out of silos. Um, and in anywhere we go, right? So, for example, right now, Procomum is really investing in uh, co international cooperation with, you know, countries um, in the so-called global south, so the global majority, uh, through a civil society organizations, because we really believe that um, we are suffering really similar problems, of course, with different contexts, um, and we need to exchange more um how do we strengthen our 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 our, our, our advocacy power um uh, and for that we need to to be really strategic right because um for example tech companies they have a lot of money to that goes to lobby so uh, how do we make our lobbies you know how are we going to create our policies uh, and how are we going to manage to put them uh, or at least you know create problems for some laws that are just passing by without any, you know, without any noise. You know, even though sometimes we don't have as much as power, we have voices, we are a lot of people together. We should be speaking out, we should be using networks such as, you know, the Fab Alliance or the GIG network, you know, and, um, and even international corporations such as GIZ, who is everywhere. Uh, how do we, you know, really, you know, prioritize um, and, 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 and speak up, you know, write articles, produce knowledge, produce research, you know, produce evidences uh, and, and create coalitions that um, defend, you know, the interests of the people and put the people at the center of the solutions, you know. And I, and I know it seems, you know, that sometimes it's like we are everywhere, like just losing some battles, it seems. But I think we also are, you know, it's so invisible that, you know, we kind of lose the fact that there are a lot of things that turn the way they turn successfully because there are civil society organizations, there are people that are, you know, really, you know, standing up for the rights and organizing themselves etc so this is this is what i what i what i've been we have been working on uh i can send the link of the commons network they've been here at, at our space uh, some months ago uh, and shared with us the process they're running about you know digital commons and etc and how to create a, a public infrastructures for for the for, for, for the internet, for example, which is, which is one. Um, and another thing that I think that is really important, I mean, I was at the beginning of the IFAR policy a lot of years ago. We were at Ru Rwanda when everything started. And I think the IFAR policy is a great example of, you know, an idea that turned into a big, you know, network of, 
you know, uh, um, of Pan-African, you know, movements of pushing for um, laws that can benefit innovators. Um, and when I was at the government, I worked with Ruiz, he, who was in, in the university. Uh, so he, he was at the university, I was at the government, and we made a cooperation uh, for, um, for um, maker spaces in the, in, 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 the, in, in the countryside of Brazil. And I think that um, this is something that we should, we could, for example, push for, you know, how do we create, for example, funds to uh, uh, promote spaces of innovation, of social innovation, uh, because these spaces um, and, uh, are not only places of technology development or innovation, etc., but they are also places of uh, community uh, creation, and they are also places of the, uh, the ex you know um, democracy creation, right? So um, I'm really an advocate of not uh, not transforming ourselves into the tech group. You know, we are not the tech group. We should be, you know, we should be, you know, the society group because technology, innovation, you know, digital, everything, everything that we are doing is actually human, you know, socially important. So we shouldn't be saying, oh, we are, you know, the tech people. I'm not the tech people, you know. I'm, our space at Procomum, although we do have technology development and I, I do know how important it is to create jobs, you know, for us to develop our economies. It's as important as all of that, that we have spaces that people can be together, that the people can work together, can develop solutions together, can change policies, can pressure the government for climate adaptation policies, you know, can create arts um, uh, and, and, and feel they are important and that they feel that their creativity can it's actually, you know, something that is important to change their context and the context of their country, of their neighborhood, of the city. So one of our one of our phrases at Procomum is that, you know, uh, a smart city is not possible without smart people. You know, which in Portuguese is not exactly like that. It's like uma cidade inteligente não se faz sem sua gente. So an intel, uh, a smart city, in, which in Portuguese is intelligent, is not possible without its people. And sometimes I think that some tech scenes, yeah, I, I know the translation is not really good, but some, sometimes people the, uh, in tech scenes, and I'm not saying these people here because I think we are really uh, on onto that. I, but I think some, sometimes people that are working in tech and digital uh, uh, perspective, they lose the 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 perspective on on the people and when why are we doing that what what exactly what kind of society do we want what kind of society are we creating you know um so um for me there's no magic we, we should be making our policies centered in the people centered on you know diminishing inequalities uh centered in creating uh jobs for a just transition you know um because you know we are living a multiple crisis, and I think we do have the knowledge to get out of this with solutions. And if there's someone who has solutions, I think this is us. This is the global majority. These are the people who have been for for the last uh, 100 and 100 and years uh, creating solutions uh, out of conditions that were extreme um, and that were usually not advantage, um, but still. Um, you see, you see how you know we've created a number of solutions uh, that make life livable. So uh, for for us at Procomum, it's really putting life at the center in everything that we do, and really remembering why are we doing what we're doing. Um, so I don't know if I answered your question exactly, who is, and I think maybe I could send some some things later. But I think for me, the most important is for us to remember, you know, the big things. Why are we doing what we're doing? Because then everything else is, 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 is coming after that. You know, the lens should be that for me. 
for, for us at Procomum at least. Well, please send all the links that you imagine you can send. Will be super. I think it's super cool because we have a lot of discussions and community calls in life, in professional size, and they go for one hour, whatever. But when we talk about politicians and policies, we can stay forever. So just to go to an end of this call, otherwise we will stay here forever. Uh, Freda, your last words for the call, your last impressions and your, your wishes of future perspectives now that we are all looking forward that Kamala Harris will save the world. Yeah, thanks, Ricardo. Um, uh, I think I think I I really took some lessons out of what Georgia said. Uh, one of them would be the coalitions and organizations adding their voices. Like, uh, for instance, in the case of the right to prepare policy, um, the actions that were put in place to make this happen at this point in time have lasted for years. And there are so many people online talking about the impact and the significance of the right to repair policy. And I feel like with people like us volunteering our time to causes like this, in some years to come, we would have more positive results out of the works that we are doing. And um, Georgia also mentioned the fact that sharing knowledge and sharing impact would be useful. And um, I think that sometimes makers and innovators, especially those on the community levels, do not do this enough. Um, an experience that Joseph and I had while we were putting the policy recommendations together um, was that we weren't finding the makerspace impacts online. And things were very not straightforward. Like we couldn't outrightly see what some maker spaces, especially in Africa, was doing because they were just not online. And I feel like for us trying to make a case before policy people who have their own agendas, who have limited funding, who have less time, it's important that we keep putting out the impacts that we have out there because they can become very relevant when we have the opportunity to speak to powerful people or policy makers. And, um, I would say that organizations or networks like GIG and the Africa Maker Space Networks are great starts to volunteer your time with um, a group of people who are um, interested in courses that are above themselves. And so um, for us gathered here, we are, we, are, we are taking one great step to ensuring that we add our voices and our time. And so thank you so much for organizing this recording, Fadia. And um, it was very insightful. I think I'll reach out to Doreen afterwards to see how we can collaborate together. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, please, Doreen, your last words. And thank you very much, you all. Yeah, Ricardo, um, again, thanks. Thanks to the GIG team for organizing this. Um, for me, I think I already highlighted the importance of policy. It has such a key role to play in the advancement of um, of digital, of innovation, of um, every other topic that concerns the gay community. And um, one of the things that I actually facilitated a steering committee meeting for our partners yesterday. And um, one of the things that came up, it's actually been a food for thought for me. And I would like to share that here. Um, one of the, the members um, did mention that, um, you know, for so long, we have been trying to push our national AI strategy, and it's taking so long for it to get passed by cabinet. And so for him, he felt that um, we, can't, we can't continue to sit and wait till this policy is passed before we begin to implement it, right? There are different ways that different stakeholders can take their parts to play in the implementation of the policy, the recommendations that have been put in the, in the strategy or in the policy document. So for example, I, I appreciate the fact that um, gay community has several people that cut across all facets of the ecosystem. For example, how can innovators in their own small way um, 
implement certain actions. You know, I like the fact that you're advocating, but um, let's continue building. Let's continue um, working on the ideas that we, we are putting together. There are several institutions that have access to funding for the innovators. Um, before we get the policy documents passed by cabinet, is there a way that financial institutions, people that give access to funding, you know, funding doesn't only come from the government. And to tell you the truth, a lot of times government, government stalls in passing these policies because it's backed by funding. And so if funding is not available, then it becomes hard for them to ascend to that, that, that bill or to that policy document, you know. So in our little ways, how can we um, pick, pick this document as a whole, look at the various components of it, then as stakeholders that will eventually even contribute to the implementation of these policies, how can we in a little way start implementing or contributing towards the implementation of the initiatives that have been put together in the policy document? You know, so I'd like to encourage all of us as we end today's call that um, let's keep advocating, let's keep pushing, let's keep making these recommendations, um, but also in a little ways, how can we um, support various little initiatives on our own with the little resources we have to ensure that we are still contributing towards advancement or development in the space. So thanks a lot again, Ricardo, and to everyone in the gay community for putting this together. And I very much look forward to participating subsequently in your sessions. Thank you, Zori, for joining. Thank you very much. And welcome to the gig community. Uh, uh, Georgia, please, your last words before. I know you said a lot of last words in the last wording, but any other... <laughs> I think I said before? already. <laughs> it was super last wording. I don't need to speak more. Have... Okay. No, just, just if you have any you. other comments, you know. Any no, no, comments. I think... Just thank you, and I think uh, it was really nice to meet uh, Frida and Doreen um, and Joseph as well, although I didn't see his face. <laughs> and um, just to put ourselves uh, um, for you no know, collaborations with with the Make Project, which I think is a really really nice project. And and I and I agree with Doreen. I think um, one of the things that we really advocate for is that you know from the protests to the to the proposal, you know, uh, we need to keep our hands dirty. We need to be hand, hands on, also creating things, and um, and but then again, we should be systematizing it and documenting it because, as Frida said, you know, sometimes you look for things and and you can't find it. So we really need also to create space and time to. Um, to write about the results, our failures, you know, to write about, you know, uh, to uh, transform data into knowledge and, and, and to pub publish it, you know, and, and document it. And I think documentation is, is one lesson that we learn a lot from, from the hacker communities, right? And the maker communities, is that we should be documenting everything, our mistakes, uh, what we got right, um, our questions, uh, and I think that what makes us, you know, grow the cake together, you know, of the knowledge of, of our knowledge production, etc. And then thanks gig again for for being this wonderful network, and have a great day for everybody. Okay, you have a great day as well, Joseph. Sorry, I forgot about you. Uh, you close your camera and you fall down and then I lost you in my mind. So sorry about that. If you can still listen to us and any yeah. other last <laughs> words before we leave. Okay. Um, I thank you everyone for for having to put this together. Um, it's been a wonderful um, experience and also learning curve for me today. And um, I'll say that um, everything that has been discussed here resonates very well with me. And um, I'll thank everyone for participating. And um, there is one thing I just want to talk about um, throughout uh, my journey of engaging makers, innovators, and startups. Um, one thing I realized is it's good to do something that you like, but it's also good or it's also very important to align every activity that you do to the policies of the country, the region, or even when it comes to the global a perspective of policies. So um, I think that's something that I've realized from this particular call that 
as um, we are trying to have collaborations with various um, polit uh, policy makers and various governments and institutions. It's also essential that we let makers, we let innovators be aware that they should also ensure that activities that they involve in are also in line with policies either on the national level or on the international level so that it can be recognized not just within the community that they, they operate but also beyond that so that any um, support that is needed can also be given to them as well so i thank everyone for this uh, wonderful call and i look forward to the next one thank you thank you people and watch your thank ears thank you bye bye thanks everyone